Well, that's difficult to know, actually. Um, Michigan certainly has been in a recession for six or seven years already, and places like Detroit and Flint and Pontiac are the most severely affected in the state. But I think that uh, what's important for us to consider is that we have had an industrial policy in which basically the corporations have been in the driver's seat. They're the ones that have called the shots. And we now, given the layoffs uh, and plant closings, I think have an opportunity to change that kind of industrial policy and say, okay, what are the kinds of jobs that we actually need? Here we are facing climate change with all the problems that we, we see about toxic waste and so forth. So this is an opportunity to put people back to work doing things that need to be done in our society. So uh, I don't think it has to be uh, the Great uh, Depression or even a recession, but that can only happen if we have good jobs and if plants aren't closed. So that, to me, is what's really important. I would say another factor would be um, there should be a moratorium on uh, utility shutoffs and foreclosures so that if a person is without a job, until we can uh, retool and reinvent um, what needs to be done, that nobody is going to be uh, thrown out of their, their homes. During World War II, there was a retooling in Detroit. No auto production existed. Within eight months, the government had changed that situation so that they were producing what was necessary. Well, I would contend there's a war right now uh, in our cities and that the, it's the duty of us to, to, um, to retool ourselves and to uh, get busy making the things that are necessary and will create a better society than the one we had before the recession. Thank you, Diane. Uh, Patrice, what do you see in the forecast? Recession, recovery, or depression? Well, right now everyone's betting on a recovery in the second half of the year. So uh, it, you've had quite a bit of euphoria on Wall Street and uh, investors are, believe that uh, the economy will start growing again in the second half of the year. It's certainly true that Detroit has had much worse for a long time than the rest of the economy. Yeah, the, the descriptions that she made uh, of, of, of Detroit and Flint uh, were accurate when I was out there 15, 20 years ago. So, I mean, this is not a new thing. The the uh, the problem basically is that that until until a couple of decades ago, people could go right out of high school with no particular skill, go into an auto plant, count on having a job there at a good wage for their entire career. Uh, those jobs have disappeared, and we haven't been training people that. To, to be able to adjust. I mean, uh, if you look at the kind of skills that are required in um, today uh, in, in a lot of the industries, even the ones that people say are similar to autos, I'm gonna you don't have to. I'm going to have to ask you to put a pin in your okay. thought. We've got to take a quick break for our news. We'll be right back. Welcome back to American Dream. I'm Cynthia McKinney. Our topic today is the U.S. economy and the General Motors bankruptcy. I'd like to thank Diane Feely for joining us on the telephone from Detroit, Michigan. I'd like to welcome Fred Vitale, who is a former Ford employee and is now the chair of the Michigan State Green Party. And joining us in the studio, we have Patrice Hill from the Washington Times and George Eads, formerly of General Motors. Thank you for joining us. Now it's time for us to hear from our men and women on the street. And they were asked this question. Is the middle class disappearing? Uh, no, I don't think they're disappearing, the middle class. I think it's a good fresh start for GM. There are fewer and fewer factory jobs and manufacturing jobs. They've been declining since the 1950s and are 
declined very fast in this decade. There are a lot of good jobs left in the country in science and high tech industry and in a lot of the services industries. The question I think an event like the GM bankruptcy poses is when you have people who are 50 and 45 and 55 still working, still good at their jobs, but very but old and hard to train for new ones, how does the country care for them? No, I don't. <laughs> Elaborate on that? Yeah. Well, no, I mean, uh, there are, uh, look around the streets, there are all sorts of uh, shops here where middle class people are working. There are all sorts of, uh, it's true that manufacturing is a uh, less important part of the economy than it used to be 30 years ago, but there are all sorts of other middle class jobs, truck driver jobs, and jobs working in shops, and all kinds of service jobs, uh, school teacher jobs, uh, nursing jobs, uh, all kinds of jobs. So no, I don't think that middle class is disappearing. No, I don't think so. Whenever you want to rebuild, you have to destroy first. You have to always destroy, then you are able to rebuild something better. So I don't think that the middle class is disappearing. It'll probably be rough for a little, but eventually they'll come back. I think that the people that are being affected by these car closures, these car plant closures, mostly are people of color. I mean, Detroit, the whole city is built on that industry, and if it goes down, what happens to those people? Now, if we're going to call them middle class or working class, the labels, I would say Americans are being impacted adversely. Yes. Yes, I do. I think that's been coming a long time. It's going to be the rich and then the poor, and I'm middle class, so I, know. <laughs> I really think so. This has come a long time. Well, it's clear that the ramifications of the economic crisis and the bankruptcy of General Motors are enormous. Our reporter, Ernie Cruz, was, has a report. Okay. Um, George. Uh, we didn't get a response to you about the middle class, and I think you had something that you wanted to add about dealers. Uh, well, when people ask, are the middle, is the middle class uh, disappearing? I don't think it's disappearing statistically. There's always going to be middle class, but I think what is disappearing is the is jobs that provided extremely high wages and benefits for people with relatively low skills. Um, I'm looking here at the at the data for Ford in the last before the last contract, and the the uh, essentially the take-home pay for a Ford worker was about $32 an hour, and the benefits were around $38 an hour. Mm -hmm. So the the essentially the cost to Ford of employing that person was about $70 an hour. Now those are the kind of jobs, uh, particularly with somebody with with no no skills and who've been working there for a long time, um, those are the ones that are going to be hard to, to replace. Patrice? Mm -hmm. I think what he said is correct that um, those are the kinds of jobs because they don't require a, a great education or training. Uh, they can easily and have been essentially shipped overseas and uh, any country in the world now can make cars. They make them in Brazil, China, um, you know, these are the countries which probably will be making more cars in the future. In, the, in our country, we'll be making fewer cars. So the trend from quite a long time has been for higher skilled jobs and higher education. That is the way to preserve our middle class, uh, to, to make sure that you go to college and finish your, certainly finish high school mm -hmm. and get some kind of training outside of high school, whether going to college or some specialized training. <laughs> exactly, and, and learn what you need to learn uh, in high school. So this is the, this is the fu future. If you want to be in the middle class in America, that's how you do it. Uh, you don't drop out of high school and expect to have a great middle class job with great benefits handed to you anymore. Well, that's uh, pretty interesting. Um, Fred, you're there in Michigan where the rubber actually meets the road. Yes. And I know that across the country there are some communities where we have 50 percent high school dropout rate. Can you talk to us about what the prospects are for the middle class in Michigan first and then what you see in your travels across the country? 